All right, we'll get started here. So hello, everyone. My name is Brad Lobner. I'm a financial advisor with Northwestern Mutual. I'm excited to be with you today. Uh, I also have a, a passion for entrepreneurship. Um, earlier in my career, I was in a medical um, equipment startup. We had eight machines worldwide and was a, a key contributor to that, going to 400 machines worldwide. I've also started some nonprofits and, and uh, been in the boards of those where we've been able to donate um, over $250,000 to different cancer charities. And, you know, what I do now is I really work with individuals, business owners, and really, you know, creating a, a vision of what they say really matters, but also a plan and a financial plan to have it happen. Now, one thing I know from experience and uh, working with a lot of business owners as entrepreneurs, you are very passionate about what you're up to and, you know, what you want to create for a business. And that is your solo drive. Now, the other thing I also know about is that is that you know what can happen over time is that we don't focus on our personal side of things. We're driven in the business. We're moving forward in the business, but we're not looking on the personal side of things. So my goal today is to really give you an opportunity to start to look not only for what's going to have you be successful in your business. We know you're going to plan something like that. But to look on the personal side of things, how do you make sure you have your personal, professional, and financial business plans all set together so they're working together? Um, so it's meant to be interactive. It's meant to be participatory. So you know, if you do have a, a pen, paper, or tablet, whatever you're going to do, you take some notes. Uh, please grab that real quick. And I'm not sure either. Can you guys, um, if you guys talk, can I hear you at all, or can you just hear me? Maybe I'll type in the chat. Can you guys, if you talk, can you? Can I hear you? Okay, got it. Thank you for that. So uh, I'll ask in the chat here. So thanks for that. So what we're going to do is just kind of jump in here. And this is really a conversation. So I'll give you times to, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. I'll answer them. And also, you know, I'll give you time to reflect and look as well. So this is meant to be educational and for you guys to get some work done here as well. So, you know, the first thing is, you know, why even create a plan? Like, why do I need a plan, right? Well, the one thing we say is that we're always too busy. And uh, as a business owner, your business is going to be your focus. But what I've seen over time is people get so focused on that, their next plan for how they're going to be financially stable in the future is what's their next business going to be? What's their next business going to be? And at some point, if that doesn't happen, if they don't have anything to fall back on, it's like, what do we do? So I want to give you an opportunity first to just kind of think a little bit about what are the things you really care about in life? You know, what are those things that really matter to you personally, professionally, and financially? And like I said, knowing as an entrepreneur, business is going to be a, a big part. But just look, like if it's three years out, five years out, 15 years out, you know, do you want to have a family? Are you going to have kids? Are you not? How many businesses are you going to have? Where do you want to live? Maybe in future in retirement. So if you've got that pen and paper pad or whatever device you use, just take a moment and really look and brainstorm. What are those things that you really care about that you want to fulfill in life? Personally, professionally, and financially. And like I said, I know the professional is going to be the big one, right? But we also want to look at those other areas. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes just to brainstorm and write some things down. So once again, standing three years out, five years out, 15 years out, what are those personal professional and financial goals. Now, I'm going to be quiet and uh, give you a minute to do that, a couple minutes to do that. And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. And like I said, I know as entrepreneurs, that's going to be the driving force. But, you know, look out, swing out, be creative, you know, start thinking about does your business, is that going to be all of your passive income? Are you going to sell it in five years? You know, where do you want to live in the future? Just so start creating that picture.
fun thing about this too is there's no wrong goal. There's no wrong vision. This is your vision. This is unique to you. This is your passion, what you want to be up for. Because the other thing too is you want to start thinking about as a business owner, you're also going to be a business owner, but you're also an employee. So part of those financial goals is not how much does your business want to make, how much are you going to pay yourself in a salary? You know, that's where we can get in trouble with business owners. We put all our money in there and we haven't even thought about how much am I going to pay myself month to month or year to year. So have some of those financial goals, not just be for what you want for business revenue, but also what you want for personal revenue. How much are you going to pay yourself? Okay, cool. I'll give you about one more minute. If anybody needs some more time, can you just uh, shout out in the chat? All right, great. So now I'd, I'd love as uh, some of you guys would be willing to just type in the chat, what's what's one personal, professional, financial goal that really inspires you that you uh, came up with as your brainstorm? Just share it in the chat and I won't say who it is, but I'll read off some of them so people kind of get an idea of uh, what you're all starting to create. So take a moment and just uh, some of you brave souls are willing to share, just put in the, put in the chat, what goals are you creating? Or oh, never mind, Amber, you're in front of me. All right, thanks Amber. So who'd be willing to share some of their goals? Just go ahead and put them in the chat. Leaving money to kids. Awesome. Six month reserve. Awesome. Cool. Anyone else? And keep thinking, right? So keep thinking as we go through this. And this is something in the planning process you always want to come back to. So now, when we look at planning financial security, we're not going to get necessarily into the, the details specifically, recommendation, anything like that. But what I'm going to share with you is the cornerstones of creating a plan. You know, whatever you created is your vision. And like I said, it's important to have your personal plan along with your business plan. You want both. Because if you don't have both, they eventually all kind of combine and then, you know, you're not, <laughs> it doesn't end well. So you want to have both. So. Now, if we take a step back with those goals, there's five key actions or areas to look at. We want to look at over time, how do we save money? Where do we save money? How do we save it? How do we access it? Pretty simple, right? But what a lot of people don't know is there's just different places to save money and how it works. Then spending. What's the money you're making and what's the money that you're spending out? Then growing, how do I effectively and efficiently over time grow my money so that it's working for me? And then we want to get in the protecting, like things happen. How do you make sure that you, your family, your goal, your business are protected no matter what comes up? And then also, how do you give? I also find, you know, successful business owners, most people, they want to give back in some ways. And there's advantages to do that as a business owner as well. So those are the five key areas. Where do you want to save? Where do you want to sp spending? growing, protecting, and giving. So ultimately, we want to think about those different things that you said were your goals. You want to think about the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years for saving. What do you need to save for? That's why we did that vision planning. You probably want to have know how much do you need to save to have your business start up? How much do you need to save to have that six-month reserve or, you know, Amber, for leaving money to your kids? How much can you save for that? So that's why those visions are important. So once we know what we're saving for, then the question is, well, how much do we save? So the perfect plan, we want to save about 20% of our income. 
Okay. And once again, um, you're not, we're not necessarily going to go into the details of the planning. This will give you an overview and you can continue to expand it and follow up as well. But if you think about it, you have your business revenue and business income, and then you have your personal income. So from your personal income, you want to save 20% of that towards your goals. And it could be higher, but that's the, that's the starting spot. Now we go into emergency fund, pretty simple. We always want to have three to six months of our fixed living expenses in our emergency fund. That's for something happens, we need to pay a bill, maybe we don't have income for a period of time. So when you're planning your budget and your saving plans, you always want to make sure you have at least three to six months of living expenses in there. Now that's something you'd also want to establish for your business when you get in a detailed model. How much business revenue do you need? You know, how much cash you need on hand if something happened to continue to operate the business. And once again, you want to keep those distinct because what I've seen a lot of people do is business owners getting started. They just have one pool and they take from all of it and it just leads to chaos down the road. So emergency fund, three to six months of living expenses. Also have a, a separate plan for what you want to have for your business cash reserves. You know, and I think one thing I've seen people get caught up in is like, I need more money to invest. I need more money to save. The thing that you always have on your, what the biggest thing about saving is time. The earlier you start, it doesn't matter the amount, the more it's going to grow for you over time. So saving investing isn't one of those things that you just try to catch up to, you know, the five years before your business launches or, you know, when you're ready to retire. Just to kind of give you an example, Let's say you start with investing something in a, a you start with a bolus of a thousand bucks. You're putting a hundred dollars every month into it. And each year it's growing by about 6%. In 30 years, just by doing that, that money will grow from that thousand dollars initial investment to 103,670. So that's for those of you that are saying, oh, I can't save. I don't have enough. That's just a hundred bucks a month. Just imagine over years begin to add to that, to add to that, to add to that. That's the power of saving and saving early. So that's one, if anything out of today, that's what I invite you to look at, really look at that budget and determine where, how much can I save? Get my emergency fund set and then how much can I also be putting towards something that's gonna grow for me over time? So the other thing you wanna think about when you're creating your plan too is in retirement, what do you wanna be doing? Like if you're going to be have that business, when you want to sell it, what's your exit strategy? Are you going to be 50 years old or are you going to be 60 years old? Because we want to make sure that your plan doesn't run out of money before, basically doesn't run out of money while you're alive. So that's why it's important to either think about that or meet with someone like myself or someone you know in your area, but just really talk to someone about once you've kind of got those goals set up, you know, what does this look like and make sure you've got some accurate projections. So now that we've looked at that, the thing is to think, okay, where do I save? Because I think a lot of times people think that saving and growing money, investing money is hard, it's difficult, I gotta know the right place to put it. Really what it is, it's having a vision and then it's having a disciplined, repeatable structure where you do things over time. And you do it in a way, I'm sure you've heard the old adage, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So it's like, how do you save over time such that in the future, when you need money, you have a place to go for it? To go get it and as a business owner you're there's always your aggressive like your home run money your business is your home run money you're always going to get the most back out of putting money in there so you want your home run money we know that and then we look at our aggressive and our safer places to save money so we want to be having all those buckets at the same time so that if something does happen to the business you have something to fall back on versus going farther in debt so the most common places to save money obviously one is the bank get that savings going. But after a while, the bank doesn't really give much back money back to you. Other place to put money is bonds. Bonds are kind of that more safer, traditional kind of low risk, low reward, but it gets you something better than the bank. There's mutual funds, there's stocks, there's 401k plans, and there's individual retirement accounts. Now I would consider the 401ks, the individual retirement accounts, kind of the longer term riskier options. As business owners, there's a lot of other other things you can do, like a, I'll say like a SEP IRA. So there's ways you can invest and save money and defer tax payment over time. 
Um, that's something to think about when you're setting up your business. Who are you going to do it for? Is it just going to be for me? Is it going to be for a lot of other people? The mutual fund here kind of area is aggressive or conservative based on what your goals are. So where you put money is all based on your goals. But after that, it is really setting a repeatable structure to take action over time. So just like to check in so far, if there's any questions, go ahead and I'll, let's take a pause um, and go ahead and throw any questions in the chat and I can answer those. Take a moment. Okay, cool. It's interesting not being able to hear you guys and waiting for the chat. But um, so then we get into spending. So budgets are important. It's really simple, but a lot of people don't do it, and that's that's when they get in trouble. So you want to look at both from a personal and business side. What are your personal expenses? What are your fixed living expenses? Yeah, Jamila, I see you got it. So you think of you set it on your fixed living expenses. So what's your mortgage? What's your rent? Your cell phone, food, groceries, things you know are going to pay each month. Okay. Same thing for the business. You want to know what's what are your business expenses for a month, and you have both of those. See, then you want to know how much is your business going to bring in, how much does your business need to pay out, and one of those business expenses that you want is you want to have your salary be a business expense you're accounting for. You want to pay yourself. So then when you pay yourself, it's like, okay, how much money am I getting every month? And then um, got a question. Let me finish this thought, Scott, and I'll come back to you. And then... Um, once um, you pay yourself, then how much money is going out? Then how much can you save? Uh, Scott, uh, protecting income. We're actually going to get to protecting income in a little bit if you can uh, hold on. Uh, the question is, it depends. Um, I'll answer now. For protecting for short-term disability, it depends as far as how much you're able to save in your shorter range bucket and uh, what your current situation is. If you can have three to six months worth of your living expenses in your short-term savings personal, usually I don't recommend it. But if not, and it's a way you can get it, and it could potentially be a business write-off on your situation, it may make sense. Um, i got to speak in generalities in a little bit because it's always um, specific to your exact situation. But great question, Scott. Um, Nicole has a question. Do you recommend any specific budgeting tool, uh, such as building an Excel sheet type of gal? <laughs> I'm sure there are many or better options. Um, it, it just depends. Um, I personally like Excel. You got to do what works for you and what you're actually use. Um, if you find an app works really well, use an app. If you like, if you like Excel spreadsheets and you use it, great. It doesn't really matter what it is. All that matters is that you use it and you set it up in a way that it's not so complicated that it becomes more work to update. So Excel works great. Um, you know, that's what I use. There's a lot of, um, there's also a lot of, uh, trying to think here, a lot of banks or online tools are pretty good too. Like I know my credit union has an option where you can put in budgets and use it. I use that for a while. But spreadsheets are what I like best. Um, if also, if you just if you're an app person, you could just search um, uh, apps, you know, budgeting apps in your um, whatever phone you use, device you use, and there'll probably be some good free ones. But um, I would start. I prefer Excel just because you can have a little more control over it, and you just want to set a system of when every week or every other week you update it. That's the key kind of thing. Great question. Um, also, I do think there is a, a Northwestern Mutual app that um, is pretty good for the budgeting as well. So if you want to check that out, I think that's free. You can download it as well. So once you get the track and the expenses, the key thing is just to do it. Uh, it's never fun when you start doing it. <laughs> it's kind of painful the first couple times, but it gets easier and easier and easier. Um, and then as you're tracking your expenses, you'll notice things that you're spending money on that aren't forwarding your goals. They're not forwarding your business. So then you got to ask, like, do I really need that, you know, third coffee this week? Or do I need that takeout? Or you start noticing things you're spending money on. And then if it's not serving your vision, you know, do you really need it? 
And then you can potentially free up some more money to either save or to move forward on those other things you care about. You're welcome, Nicole. So if we come back again to the budget, I think this is key. Um, when we look at a budget, 20% we know is for our saving and investing. That's short, short medium, long term. Then 60% is your essential savings, or sorry, essential expenses. So that's like your rent, mortgage, food, um, light bill, gas, things like that. Um, and then 20% is your discretionary income. That can be your fun money. Yes, you're hearing it right here. I want you to go have fun with your money. Just set it in your budget. So when you know you're spending that money on fun, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Same thing with saving. You want to have it be a part of your budget. So the uh, discretionary is fun, personal care, clothes, things like that. Uh, Jamie, great question. Um, when looking for a financial analyst or someone to help and guide, guide as you would, uh, what should we ask for? What questions should be asked? Um, well, a lot of good questions are, you know, see who other people you know, who do they use? Who do they go to? Um, you want to ask people how, honestly, how, how they get paid. And they should be okay to tell you that. If uh, you talk to a financial advisor and they don't tell you how you get paid, I probably wouldn't work with them. Um, you want to find a good fit and feel. That's the big thing. Um, there's different kind of advisors based on what you're looking for. Uh, there's some that just do kind of the growth kind of advising with investments. There's some that do just the risk. I myself am in that middle where I do the comprehensive planning with the uh, risk planning and the investments and do it all in one. So I think you just want to feel good about the experience you have and that you're getting all your questions asked. And, you know, when you, I think an important thing about when you work with a financial advisor is we're never expecting like you, you to know everything. That's why you're coming uh, to talk to one of us. But I would start by asking, who do you know in your area that you trust, respect? Usually they probably work with someone pretty good. Uh, we also have a website, northwestmutual.com. You can go on and look for local people. Um, people like myself work around with people across the country. So mostly consultations are free. So you get to talk to someone. If it's a good fit and feel, then go forward with it. If it's not, then you don't have to. But I'd start with the people you know, who do they use, do some quick research, and then have a couple conversations. If the fit and feel goes good, then go with what, who you like. Thanks, Jamie. You're welcome. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I do free consultation. The first two meetings I do with anybody are always free. There's a, a vision planning session and there's a recommendation session. And, you know, you don't pay anything for until after that session. So a lot of people have those models. Um, and it just depends on where you are for fit. So um, then when we're looking at the budget, jumping back to the budget, we've got 20% savings, 60% fixed expenses, 20% discretionary. So after we've got that set, you want to deal with where you're off on that too. If you see that you're spending 40% on your essential expenses, it's like, okay, what, where do I cut back? How do I adjust that? But when you're creating your budget, that's kind of the guidelines you want to be in. Um, let's see here. Great questions too. Um, you know, and, and I think it's important to also do some check-ins. You know, if you work with an advisor like myself, we always check in about once a year to kind of see how our goal is going. Are we on track? Are we off track? It's always important to ask questions so you understand things. Don't think you have to be the expert in everything you're doing. But um, I know as a business owner, we want to hold things tight, myself included. But be willing to ask questions, be vulnerable, and, and check in, you know, with yourself and the person you're working with to see how you're doing on those goals. Um, let's see here. So then it's, then it's growing. So now the question is, is where do we want to put money? I think, um, uh, pitfall. Some people come in as they look at where's the right place to put money and when do I put money in? Really? It's, you want to have a balanced approach of where you save money and you want to ask yourself these questions based on my goals. How much risk am I willing to take with my money? That's something called risk tolerance. So do I want to be really risky? Do I want to be very conservative? Meaning, am I okay with losing it all if I get a lot back? Or do I want to know I'm going to have something and gain a little bit? 
Um, then how many years am I going to invest? When am I going to touch that money? Am I, do I want that money in three years? Am I not touching it till 30 years? If you're not touching it for 30 years, you're going to be a lot more aggressive with that money and where you're putting it. And then the other question is, when are you going to pull it out? Because some places you put money, you know, it's not as easily accessible to get the money back out once you put it in there. So you want to think about how risky, when do you want to use the money, and how do you get it out? Sure. Um, so looking at, Nicole's got a question about bonds, uh, low risk. Um, talk about how bonds work a little more. So when we look at investment strategy, I'll try to answer that all in talking about investment strategy, Nicole. Um, so if we're looking at our different kinds of investments, we're always looking at how risky or how safe do we want to be. So if we think about like, there's something called equities and there's something called bonds. And then there's the bank and there's some other tools that I won't get in, but there's other safer places to put money in. I won't get that now, but um, the bank is probably the safest place you can put money. You put money in there, you know you're gonna have it, but it doesn't really grow for you. So a bond is basically a kind of investment you put money into it. Um, myself, I work in mutual funds, so it's a, a bond you can put money in. And then it's pretty conservative in nature, meaning you're not taking a lot of risk. So there's a high probability, can't guarantee it, but there's a high probability that your money is going to grow only a little bit, but you have a higher certainty that if the market goes down, you're not going to lose it. Okay. Then on the other spectrum, there's what are called equities, which are um, different kinds of companies out there. You know, there's very established companies. If you think about Apple, that's a very... You know, a lot of places we know that. Then there's sort of startups that could be a little riskier. So companies on that other fringe, those are your equities. So those are higher risks. So, and then there's everything in the middle. So what you want to look at is how do you, it's not like you build one basket, then one basket, one, one another basket. If you're building for retirement, you're going to take in your 20 and you're not going to retire until you're 60 you're gonna be riskier in your investments, okay? Because if the market goes down, you have more time to recover. Versus if you're 55 and you're about to retire at 60, you're not gonna be as aggressive. You wanna be more conservative. So the equities would be the more risk, the bonds would be the more conservative. Okay, great question. So we look at, and there's other tools out there that I can, you know, can't go over now, but there's a lot of other tools too about where else, other places that can we put money to have it grow for us over time. And the other thing to consider is once again, your business is going to be kind of your home run aggressive money. So we want to know that where else can we grow? So if something does happen with that, we have something to fall back on. And I think the other thing is just consistency over time. So you've got, a, you've got your home run money, you've got your safer bucket, you've got your aggressive bucket. How do I balance all those inside that 20% so that everything's moving forward, I'm focused on my goals, and I'm also doing it in a way that I'm you know, getting the most out of potentially taxes now and in the future. Great, awesome, Nicole. Um, so, so far we've covered saving, we've covered the creating the vision, the budget, you know, that's always the kind of fun stuff. Now I'm going to jump into the protection, but any, any questions before I jump into the protection portion of it? Okay. And I think once again, it's important to look at all this is based on the vision, your budget, and how much you can save. And then I'm, now we're going to look at protecting. Um, and I think that goes back to Scott's question. You know, as we often don't think about it, but there are some risks to, one of the biggest risks that we have is what happens if I get sick and injured and I can't work? Or what happens, you know, I think someone said earlier, how do I leave money to my kids if something happens? So one of the key elements of financial planning is to look at what if something does happen? How do we continue to move the vision forward? How do we continue to fund those buckets of money that you've created so that we know no matter what they're moving forward? So we look at three basic areas. I'm gonna cover two right for the most part during this presentation. 
One is disability. So if you get sick and injured and you're not able to work for more than three months, like if you're out six months, nine months a year, how do you keep uh, pay com income coming in, both from the personal side and the business side? The other, we look at if something did happen and you passed away unexpectedly, how do we make sure you're passed on generational wealth versus debt? Something to think about farther in the future, something called long-term care. We're all living older, and at some point, we may need some assistance in where we live, kind of care. Um, Long-term care is a, is a way to protect yourself to make sure that your assets are going towards you and you have a say in your quality of your care. Um, so thinking about uh, disability, and I think it's an important thing is most people I know, I've probably got a lot of younger folks in here, we think, hey, it's not going to happen to me. But one out of four people, if you're in a room and four people, one out of four people are going to have a short, a long-term disability claim during their lifetime. And it's usually not something in the like forever nature, could be. It's something between six months to nine months to a year and a half, somewhere in that range. But what that does is it, A, it's stressful, but then it also takes away from your ability to save, right? And then you're taking out money from those different buckets. Then maybe you're going to more debt. So, and uh, actually, and four of the main causes of disability are back problems, pregnancy complications, heart attack or stroke, and cancer diagnosis. So, and I know it's kind of one of those things, well, I'll wait till I get older when I have more of a chance to get it. Well, then it's actually harder to get some of these things. So it's always better to get it earlier and uh, younger and you're cheaper, basically. So how long-term disability works, and as a business owner, you have options how to set this up as too. Um, <laughs> wills and trust, yep. Um, so thinking about it, basically most businesses, what they do is they provide a 60% long-term uh, disability benefit. So what that means is you're not usually paying for that. And then let's say you get sick and injured, you're unable to work. The first three months is on you. You're paying that out of your own pocket. And that's where the short-term disability comes in. If you can save, if you have a three to six months benefit, I don't usually recommend having it, but if you feel better about having the short-term disability, you can always have it in place. It's kind of a personal choice there. But typically, those first three months is out of pocket, and then your long-term disability kicks in. Now, the way that works is since they're paying for it, 10%, about 10% goes to taxes, and about 50% goes to you. So that's why it's key to like, wow, I'm only living off 50% of my income, and I've allocated this whole plan where I'm saving and spending and building my business. So that's why one of the key things in the planning phase is having supplemental long-term disability insurance to so get closer to 100. So that's a way to ensure that you're getting 100% of your income versus 50. And as a business owner, I'm not gonna get it now, but there's a lot of different other ways to do this where there's different kinds of insurances to protect you if something happens, where you could hire somebody to come in and you know do the job you do, basically. So that's the, and I hope that answered your questions, got a little more. So that's the long-term disability. Um, now, you know, not the fun one to talk about, but life insurance, um, it happens. And, and also as a business owner, I, I always highly recommend you get this as soon as you can, just because if you're ever going to take out a loan, they're going to ask you, are you insured? They want to know they're, they're protected. And then there's more complicated ones based on when you have different partners. But the, the basic ones, usually when you think about is like, hey, if something happened, how much, how much would I want to leave to my loved ones? You know, do you have a mortgage? Do you have business debt? You know, do you have partners to pay off? Like, how do you have that will and trust set up, right? Um, but you want to think about what are your debts? What would you want to leave to your family or your loved ones? Or if you've got a business debt, how do you make sure you can take care of that? Because, you know, if you've got a business debt and let's say you're married and you pass away and you're the sole one working, that's going to fall on, on, on your partner. So you want to make sure that you look at that and take that seriously to know you know, how you have that in place. And there's a lot of different forms, fit, and functions. That's why it's it's all it's all around how much money you're making and what your debt are and what you want to leave. Rule of thumb is usually you want to have around 10 to 15 times your annual salary. But I know with business owners, that's a little trickier because, you know, you may have some write-offs that may be reducing that. But a key thing you want to know, too, is if you have a same thing, it's it's always better to get something earlier rather than later because it's based on your health. But the other thing is, let's say you're working at a current company, they look at your salary to justify, you know, the amount of insurance. 
as a business owner, it may be harder to get that long-term disability up front or that uh, life insurance up front because they're usually looking for two years of income. So same thing. It's just look, if you have it personally before you jump to being a business owner, you get to take it with you. So there's just an advantage to that. Um, you know, and what I kind of say, it's like any great sport, right? You've got the defense and the offense. Um, you know, the the disability, the long-term care, the life insurance, even health insurance, the emergency saving, that's your defense. Then the offense is just those different places to save money, how risky you get, when you want the money, and all of those work together to give you that freedom to be focusing on what you care about, which are those passions, right? Building that business, taking care of your people, taking care of your family, you know, going on those vacations. So another important thing to think about too is, you know, where do you want to get back? You know, where, what organizations in your community really, where do you really care about? You know, where would you want to leave your money? And where do you want to get back during your lifetime? Um, like I said, I, I personally, I, I work with, um, donate mostly to pediatric cancer treatment um, research, you know, and some of the, the groups that I work with. But find a cause you really love and you want to give away and make a difference for. But also, you know, as a business owner, there's opportunities too. I'm not saying you do with this, but personally and professionally, if you do charitably give, you got to talk to your accountant, but there's portions you can write that off. So, you know, it's a way to do good and make a difference for your business as well and your overall plan. But ultimately, it starts with where you want to make that difference. Um, let's see. So kind of taking a step back, it all starts with your vision. And that's the thing, a vision is, is updating. You wanna look at that on a yearly basis. If something's not calling for you, take it off, put something new. But you wanna write it down, you wanna have an existence somewhere. So what's that vision? And then when you step back, how do you save? What's your budget? What's the money coming in, going out? How do you effectively grow that over time? You know, How do you protect yourself and your loved ones? And then where do you wanna get back? Um, so the, and then it's just action over time. You know, taking the consistent action to save, and as your income grows, as your business grows, continue to update the plan, continue to save more. Each year you wanna be ideally saving a little more year, 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 and it's always easier to develop the habits now. So um, so I think those are the main kind of topics I wanted to go over. So I just wanted to open up now to see if anybody has any questions on anything we went over, and um, thanks for, you know, I just really appreciate the opportunity to be with you all, and. You know, the participation has been great. So does anybody have any questions over what we went over so far? Any questions, just go ahead and throw them in the chat. Awesome, Amber, you're welcome. And um, yeah, and like I said, if you wanna, if you ever want a free consultation, feel free, you can reach out. Um, you can go to the and a website, look up my name, Brad Lobner. Otherwise, um, um, if there's any other questions you have, feel free to answer now. I'm gonna hang out here for the next probably 15 minutes as long as I see people on, but if there's some further questions, let me know. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Give me a second here to make sure I get it correctly. There's my website. So feel free, all my information's in there. Feel free to take a visit. There's some more information and then um, both my email number are on there. Like I said, I offer a free consultation. So if there's anything you want to go over in more detail, um, you know, have some custom plans, you know, feel free to reach out.
You're welcome, Jamie. Appreciate it. Okay, I'll, like I said, I'm just going to hang out. So if anybody's got any questions, feel free to write them in the chat and um, we'll be here. You know, the other the other thing I invite you to do is whatever you did write for your vision, um, you know, print that out and put it somewhere. You know, put time in your calendar to review it. Um, there's something about when you write a vision down and, you know, keep reading it, it becomes more and more real. Um, and, you know, put some time and some intention behind this and, you know, when you're going to do that budget work and, you know, where you're going to start saving or what's the next action you're going to learn to do more specific buckets we talked about and how to save or how to protect. Is there uh, a Verado? I hope I'm saying that correctly. Is there a link to a replay? I believe it's being recorded I, and posted on the YouTube, but I'm not sure where. So I would, I think there's a YouTube channel on here somewhere, a place where it's posted. So um, not 100% sure, but I think it is going to be recorded and posted somewhere. Or if you have any questions, um, Eduardo, like I said, my my website's there. So if you want to click on that and, and reach out to me, uh, you know, we can have a quick conversation that way too. Or ask a question now if you have one. Awesome. The other thing I would say is, you know, when you're doing your, if you look at your vision again and it's not big enough, create a really big, bold vision. Um, and like I said, I know as entrepreneurs, uh, your business is going to be the biggest part of that. Um, so really stay true to that and, and share that vision with people. Share it with the people you care about. Uh, share it with people that will hold you to account to it, especially when you don't want to do it. Um, that way it just has it more and more real. And I really just appreciate um, each and every one of you taking the time uh, to come join me today and, you know, learn about, you know, ways to empower your future. Uh, I really appreciate it. Obviously, I have a passion about this. So um, I appreciate the fact you took the time today and really acknowledge you for your participation and the questions and, you know, some of the forethought you even took to, to ask some of the questions. So I can tell you've been doing some thinking about this already. So um, awesome to be with you all today.